One of the things that's so interesting about that relationship is it, it feels so close from the first film, particularly Sharon. He's, he, it seems like he's, he's calling the manager every other scene, but you don't really see them together until the very end of the second film. We didn't really have any scenes together until the third film. But the way the relationship plays out in the third film, it almost informs what happened before in the first two films. So you get a sense that they've been together for many, 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 many years, probably even before The Continental. It's so funny because the first time I ever met Ian was in that scene at the end of John Wick 2. So I'd been a fan, but I'd never met him before. As a matter of fact, when I first met Ian at the very end of John Wick 2, I was being very weird because I was kind of tongue-tied and he was just, hey, man, how you doing? And I was like, oh, the, 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 and he was looking at me like, what's the matter with you? You, you okay? <laughs> and that's really when we became friends. We were visited by someone called the Harbinger who lets us know that the high table is not pleased with the fact that Winston let John Wick live. And so, uh, you know, in the confrontation, or, uh, or rather, uh, depending on how you want to put it, confrontation, a meeting, Winston goes to meet the Marquis, who is the representative of the high table, to plead the case. Sharon decides to go with him, because the truth is, both of them aren't summoned, only Winston is. And there's a moment where, right before they go into the room to meet with the Marquis, where uh, Winston says to him, you know, you shouldn't be here. 